renewals, increase profits, growth, brand relationships. Hello, I'm Kathy Greenler Sexton, and I'm the CEO and publisher of Subscription Insider. Subscription Insider is a resource for subscription businesses to learn how to grow and operate their subscription businesses so that they are more profitable. If you want more information about us, feel free to visit us at subscriptioninsider.com. If you are a subscription business, you know that the key element of subscriptions is renewals. So here's what I'm going to cover today. We're going to do a Part A and a Part B. In this session, I'm going to really talk about why renewals and why subscriptions, how does your business compare, provide some benchmark reports from Subscription Insider Research, as well as touch on some renewal tactics and a key issue that's on the horizon. In our next session, we're going to dive into some renewal benchmarking reports that you can actually load your own data in and see how you are doing. So off and running. Fortune Magazine wrote a great article with the best quote that everybody's using. It's a subscription economy and you're just living in it. And subscriptions have become the hot business model for everybody. Your subscription boxes, SaaS companies, well, publishing businesses have been running subscriptions for years and years and years. And why is something that was so old is now new and hot again? Well, because subscription businesses are profitable. When you look at acquisition costs of a typical business, you're going to spend a significant amount of your money acquiring your customers, and your profit margins are going to be thin or thinner than a subscription business. Subscription businesses focus on renewals, and smart subscription businesses make sure that the cost of acquisition is covered and their renewals are basically profit. And if you manage your renewals, you will manage and run a very profitable subscription business. So I want to share with you some of our research that goes into what different companies are doing. I want to say just at the outset, your business is your unique business targeted to your customers. So you may see some things that are different, and there may be some very legitimate reasons why your business doesn't map to these particular benchmarks. But you should really look at these. For monthly renewal rates, the average subscription rates are really all over the map, but <clears throat> you can see the majority are a lifetime of six to nine months, with some subscription businesses with an average of over 25 months in terms of the lifetime. And you can compare the significant behavior between a business-to-business -business and a business-to-consumer business. If you offer annual subscription rates, you want to make sure that you're above 70%, and, and typically that's what most businesses are doing. B2C companies tend to go, skew lower, but 70% is a good range, and obviously the higher the better, the higher the better, the more profitable you are. I want to touch a little bit on annual renewal rates that leverage sales teams for group and site licenses. You really want to be, especially for B2B, 90% and above. And and 80% is really the sweet spot for B2C. And, and anything below that, you're going to really need to work hard to grow that. But as I said at the top, you may have a legitimate reason for your business performing exceptionally well with a sales team going for renewal rates, that's, that is in this, let's say, a 65% range. So we're going to dive into some tips and tricks for improving renewals. And these are activities that you really can start right now. We're going to divide them into five areas. Number one, onboarding. Two, engagement. Three, dedicated marketing. Four, customer delight, and five, payment processing. <clears throat> if you're onboarding, you are welcoming your customers, 
and you're getting them educated about what your product is all about. Did you know a good onboarding campaign, if it's well constructed, will get you a 20% higher retention rate later on? That's some research that we've done, and it really bodes true when you look at the data. And we've surveyed a number of different uh, subscription companies, and you can see in this particular example of subscription publishers, B2B versus B2C, here's the different tactics that a number of them use, whether it's a series of welcome emails, they just send one email, they post videos to their house to use the site uh, page, they offer a webinar on training, or they even make a, a welcome call. B2B businesses in general, and particularly publishers, do a very good job of making sure that their subscribers, their members, are, are welcomed and educated on the use of their product. <clears throat> and when you do onboarding, what are some of the things that you should really be thinking about? Beyond your initial receipt, you should be making sure you have a series of emails that really bring that subscriber on and, and educate them about your brand, your mission, how to use the product. You really want to engage them. It really pains me when I see companies who do not engage and they wonder why their churn rates, the rate at which their customers drop off, are higher than industry norms. If you don't engage your customers, they're not going to use your product. If your customers do not use your product, they are not going to renew with you, whether it's a monthly or an annual renewal. And you start with that with the welcome journey. Congratulate them. Remind them how to use the site. Show them top content. Interact with them in some way. Send them a poll. Send them a, a note from your CEO asking what they need and even recognize them in some way, whether it's on your blog or on your site, so that they feel welcomed. There's a number of different other ideas that you could use to make sure that your customers are welcomed, and you should make sure that your welcome journey, as you think through it, goes well beyond the first four or eight weeks. You should be communicating with them in a one-to-one -one way that you could use you know, email automation for throughout the year and not just at renewal time. And that gets to that second point that I talked to, engagement. Make sure you are engaging your subscribers on an ongoing basis. Make sure that you have dedicated marketing teams uh, and programs that are geared towards retention marketing and not just acquisition and make sure that your product works really, really well for them. So with that, you're going to have a very good user experience and your customers are going to more likely renew with you. But I want to turn to credit card processing. We're in the midst of a major reissuance of credit and debit cards. Did you know that with a security standard called EMV, it's a global security standard, those are the new chip cards that you see in your wallet. The EMV chip cards, 100% of cards in your customer's wallets are in the midst of being reissued. And if you do not have a plan to manage that, you are going to have a significant jump in your churn rate because those credit cards will fail without updated information. Even a little bit more scary for those with subscription businesses or any business that is in a card not present, CNP a format, which means you're, you're, you're processing a credit card without that credit card being present, based on what happened when EMV went uh, active in Europe and Canada and Australia, the fraud was reduced as planned when the chip cards were enacted and all the fraud went online. 
So if you are a subscription auto renew business, you need to really double down and make sure your uh, fraud detection efforts are best practices because fraud will double in the U.S. like it did in Europe and Canada and in Australia. So what do you need to do to protect against fraud? Well, obviously make sure your security codes match. Make sure that your processor or gateway uh, has and you are leveraging fraud screening tools. You want to make sure that you have access through your pay, payment gateway or your processor tools to minimize the decline and also help you recover declined credit cards. You can do this through account updater programs from Visa, MasterCard, and Discover. American Express offers its own branded refresher program. You can make sure that you leverage expiration date optimization and decline recycling techniques. It sounds very technical, but remember, many of the platforms for subscription billing have tools built in, and you can Tap into these tools to help you minimize credit card churn if you, if you know about them and you leverage them. It should be noted that not all gateways or platforms use these tools. So ask smart questions about what your technology platform provides for you to minimize credit card churn and to minimize fraud. <clears throat> Lastly, I, you should be asking your subscription billing platform provider, your gateway provider, uh, and or your payment processor to provide these three reports so you can understand the health of the payment processing of your subscription business. Update or performance report, recycle recovery report, and key performance indicator report. Those are critical reports to drive intelligence on what's happening with your subscription business and help you recover credit cards that have been declined and are lowering your churn rate. So that combined with, <clears throat> combined with all the great onboarding practices that you're leveraging, ongoing engagement, a dedicated renewal marketing specialist, a great product, uh, and the payment processing, you will be able to maximize your retention rate and make sure you're making the profit that your business has, your business potential has. So that's it for part one. In part two, I will be covering specific retention reports. If you need to reach me, you can reach me at subscriptioninsider.com. My Twitter is at KG Sexton. My email is KG Sexton at subscriptioninsider.com. And feel free to call me at the number on your screen, 617-401-7653. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you.